All right, let's move on to ellipsis. Ellipses uh, present one of the largest problems for people who are just starting to learn how to draw. An ellipse is basically a circle that is seen at an angle. You see my piece, of, my roll of tape there, right? Uh, we're looking right now at 90 degrees to that surface, which makes it a perfect circle. When I rotated it, you could see that it was an ellipse. And it looked just like that template, in fact. So ellipse templates are very, very handy. Um, and I would suggest uh, if you really are drawing, find yourself drawing a lot of ellipses, um, it's always great to practice. And I always sketch them in freehand first. But having a set of templates is really helpful. So an ellipse is made up of a couple of sections. Um, ellipses are, again, well, let's look at the circle. All right, if I rotate our viewing angle, right, by rotating the roll of tape, you can see that look just at the face nearest to us, it's an ellipse. So that's what ellipses are, circles in perspective. And you can see as I rotate it, that ellipse is getting thinner and fatter. Let's first, let's talk about the anatomy of an ellipse. Let's zoom in. And you see I put some little uh, dashes across that. I'm going to grab a straight edge here so I can really nail these lines. <clears throat> All right, so an ellipse can be divided across its long axis by a line that we call the major axis. So major axis divides the ellipse across its longest dimension. Now, what that does is it makes tho both of those sides equal to each other. If I folded that ellipse on the major axis, the curve of the ellipse would fold exactly on itself. We can also divide it across its narrow dimension. And a line that does that is called the minor axis. So this is going to be very important because the minor and major axis can be used in different ways to help us draw ellipses. If I folded the ellipse, both of those halves would be exactly symmetrical. Now let's look at how this uh, ellipse can work for us in perspective. So I've got my ellipse. Um, it's got a minor and major axis. And let's extend the minor axis off into the distance. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that that line is going to a vanishing point. Well, I want to draw uh, parallel lines to that in perspective. So I know if I just radiate lines from that vanishing point, those have to be parallel lines, right, in perspective. So establish a vanishing point, draw two radiating lines, which we know are parallel. And now I'm going to draw parallel to my major axis. There, this is also happens to be parallel, more importantly, to my horizon line. Now this is a fairly extreme example of uh, the convergence. Um, technically, it's uh, outside the cone of vision, which we're not really talking about on this DVD. I, I will leave that for a... Uh, an advanced perspective or uh, a technical perspective DVD in future. Here's the uh, now very familiar construction of connecting corner to corner to find our perspective center. So I'm trying to locate the exact center of a plane that I've drawn around my circle. Right? I say circle, I mean it, it's really a uh, it's an ellipse because it's in perspective, but I know in top view it's a circle. Now, see, I just drew a line across there. It went through the middle. And look at where it touches our box that I drew around this. It touches tangent right where we would expect it to. Okay? Let's look at the major axis. The major axis, right, does not run through the middle of our square. Right? It, so, you see my ellipse at the widest point does not touch the box. Now, this is a bit of a, a mind bender. Um, I think we need to look at this probably in uh, draft view to make it a little bit more clear. So let's pull out of the uh, circle template. Let's zoom out a little bit, give myself a little more room here. All right, first I'm going to draw a circle. And we'll see how these same points uh, that divide this circle, okay, we're using above to help us with our ellipse. So oh, there's the same quadrants that I've identified, which are on the template, so it's important to use those. So first, let's, let's draw a box around this. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, divide and find center. So I'm finding center of this circle. And I'm just going to eyeball a box 
around this that uh, has its sides parallel to those center lines. There's the uh, left side of the box. So what I should be getting here is a square. See my fuzzy head coming in there. It's a, it always helps uh, when you're trying to do this, this sort of freehand drafting is to get your head more above your drawing and look straight down on it. Um, so there I am trying to line it up. So I've drawn a box tangent to my circle. Now let's find center. Now we already know center because I had the template to help, but this reinforces what we've done in perspective. Right? In perspective, I drew an X across corner to corner. Let's do the same here, corner to corner. Now, let's observe that the line dividing my circle touches the sides of my square, right? Right at the middle. Right at the middle of each, the left side and the right side, just as we would expect. Very, very logical. Now, if I observe what we did up here in perspective, you'll see that that line is the same as this line. And you can see that right at that point is where the circle touches tangent. And if you look above, the ellipse is doing the exact same thing. So what we can learn from that is that the foreshortened center of our square, okay, if we draw a line across, has to, that's where the ellipse has to touch tangent to that square.